Well, hello everybody. It's The Last Hodler again, and as you probably know, I am one of the lead blockchain developers for the UK's leading blockchain company called Online Blockchain. And I wanted to provide for you today a little bit of coding insight onto how you can create your own um, altcoin, a cryptocurrency, and how you can split the mining reward between both the miner, but also a special fund as well. Um, they'll both get a portion of the mining reward. Okay, so why the heck would you want to do that? Well, it's a really good use case for things like charity coins, where instead of um, having to donate real money, people can just donate mining power, mine some coins, they'll even get some coins themselves, but they're also um, donating the coins that they're mining. So in essence, they're donating their mining power to the charity. So it's a, it's a revolutionary new way that you can donate to charities or that you can set up a charity fund without anyone having to donate actual money, but you're still generating value. So it's absolutely fantastic. And um, I've implemented my own currency um, for for this called veggie coin and it helps animals in need so whenever you mine veggie coin you get to keep 80% of the coins and 20% of the coins going into a special animal fund that helps animals in need now uh, let's start by uh, talking about the first thing that you're going to need to do um, to implement this all right so in any block um, there's a bunch of transactions all right but the very first transaction that ever gets written into a block is called the coinbase transaction okay now what the coinbase transaction is it's the mining reward all right it's the transaction that describes how much the mining reward is and who it goes to within the block all right so as you can probably imagine every single block ever mined has a coinbase transaction all right so that's really important now generally speaking the coinbase transaction only has what's called one output, okay? And you can think of that as who the coins go to, all right? And generally, as you probably guessed by now, that one output goes to the miner of those coins, all right? I mine a block and I get the reward, all right? But we don't wanna do that. We wanna have two outputs. We wanna have one output going to the miner and then we wanna have another output going to our charity wallet, our developer wallet, whatever you wanna call it. Um, so we're gonna need two outputs in the Coinbase transaction. So, so normally in the Bitcoin source code, all right, when you um, fork your own altcoin, or if you're just looking at the Bitcoin source code, you'll see that, um, and it's not reflected here because we've changed it, but the vector of outputs um, is of size one. All right, because you're only gonna have one output, you're only gonna be sending the mining reward to one person, the miner, so you only need one output, okay? But for our model, we are gonna to have to change that. We're gonna to have to resize our Coinbase vector of outputs, that's V out there, vector of outputs. We're gonna to have to change that to size two, okay? Two outputs, one for us and one for them, all right? One for us, as in me, the developer, who's helping the animals with the veggie fund, and one for them, as in the miners who are mining the coins, all right? So that's how you split up the vector of outputs um, within miner.cpp, all right? Now, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna hard code a wallet address into the second output so that whenever a block is mined, um, the, the, the fund, the charity fund, um, immediately gets hard-coded uh, um, into the block, um, the, um, the mining reward is given to them automatically. That's a better way to put it. The mining reward is automatically given to them because the, the address of that fund is hard-coded into the code, all right? So I've, the way I've done it, and I'm not sure if this is the cleanest way in the world, but the way I've done it is I've, I've just simply made um, a C++ string, okay? And I've called it developer wallet, and this is the wallet address. Okay, so the, the, the flow in which I created this was I forked um, the, the Bitcoin repository, okay? I turned it into VeggieCoin, all right? I made a VeggieCoin wallet, all right? And then I changed this code again, put that wallet address into it, and, and, and that's the kind of the flow you have to do it. It's a little bit confusing because you have to compile, you have to fork a coin once, change it, and then um, inject the address from the unchanged version but that's kind of the only way that I know of that you can that you can do it that's the workflow you have to kind of take all right so keep that in mind because that can be a little bit of a brain teaser if you didn't know that one okay so um, the, the, so all you really need to worry about here is that I've made the receive address here and then I've kind of converted that into the um, into the objects that the Bitcoin core code um, likes to deal with okay so you can see here that I've made um, a transaction destination all right, and then I've just plugged in the developer wallet into this function here, and then I've plugged that in um, to this function, get script, and now I have something called a C script, um, which I, I'm gonna use a bit later on, all right? So stay tuned for that. So 
The next thing um, that's really important is the nature in which we uh, split the Coinbase transaction into two parts, all right? So that's the next part, that's uh, line 208 um, in the VeggieCoin GitHub, all right? So we're looking at the Coinbase transaction, okay? Which has within it a vector of outputs, all right? The zeroth, as, that's the first element, the zeroth element, right? Um, is going to be um, the minor, all right? So there, so the value of that is going to be 0.8, so 80%, 0.8 times um, the fees, which are going to be like nothing, right? Plus the block subsidy, which is the mining reward, all right? So they get 80% of the mining reward, all right? And they also get 80% of the fees, all right? And the same as um, the um, developer fund, that's the first element, it's actually the second element in the array, but it's the first because C++ um, counts from zero. He'll go the first, the zeroth element, the first element, the, the second, third, and fourth, if you have a list of five, right? So um, the first, which is the um, fund, gets 0.2 times all of that stuff. So the reward and the fees, which are 20%, all right? Um, so actually, you can well, the way we describe it in VeggieCoin, we say the miner keeps all the coins that they mine, but there's also a 25% bonus, if you think about it, because 0.2 is 25% of 0.8. So you can describe it as like a bonus rather than saying that the fund nicks 20% of your coins. So it's like kind of a nicer way to think about it. Um, but at the end of the day, it's an 80-20 split, all right? So that's how you split the Coinbase um, reward into two outputs, where one output goes one way and another output goes another way, one way being the miner and the other way being the developer wallet. But there's another thing that you're going to need to do for everybody else on the network to, the, to kind of accept those blocks, look at them and go, okay, this is valid. I'm going to allow this. We can reach a, a consensus on this. Because right now, we haven't changed anything um, in the rules which everybody else is um, is using to validate blocks all right and actually this stuff breaks the rules so we're going to need to change the rules and how are we going to do that well we're going to go into a file called validation.cpp now what validation.cpp is is a, like a 5,000 line um, document well not a document a, a 5,000 line um, piece of code um, that pretty much does every single check on incoming data um, on the network to uh, reach a consensus. So there's quite a lot of stuff in here. It, it, it really does go on for ages, right? Um, but the function that we're concerned about in this video is a function called check transaction, okay? We're checking the Coinbase transaction after all, so we're gonna be in the check transaction function, okay? So now let's go down to the bit that only checks the Coinbase transaction. All right, here it is. Line 529, you'll see the line if transaction dot is coinbase all right so we're checking the coinbase transaction here so now you've seen it here that we've got our developer wallet here okay we've got all of our stuff um, that uh, is concerning the um, the fund wallet all right and then we're gonna we're gonna start checking um, exactly what those transactions look like next all right but for veggie coin I'll just explain here We've got um, this comment here that says new rules apply after block 17,000, all right? So actually, before block 17,000, um, these these rules in VeggieCoin weren't quite implemented in the same way, all right? Um, this is a cleaner way to do it, but they weren't um, quite implemented in exactly the same way. So we had to do a hard fork at block 17,000 so that we could implement these rules um, on the existing network, all right? Um, so you won't need to worry about these new implementation rules because um, you're probably gonna be implementing this from the very first block, all right? So you may, need, you may not need to worry about that. But the first thing after that check is passed is we check whether the Coinbase transaction has two outputs, okay? Because we need to have it um, having one output to the miner and then one output to the fund. So if the vector of outputs, the Coinbase outputs, right, those, those transaction outputs, if the size of that um, list of outputs is less than two, then we know that something's gone wrong. Um, the Coinbase uh, transaction, the mining reward, isn't being split correctly, all right? So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna return an error, that's a rejection error here, and then the message that comes along with that error is gonna say, bad transactions, the vector of output size is invalid, all right? So we're not gonna accept blocks where the vector of outputs in the Coinbase transaction is less than two. 
Okay, so what's the next step? What's, what's the next thing we're going to need to check? Well, the next thing we're going to need to check is whether the second output is, in fact, the developer address at all. Okay, because it's all well and good. We can get our block and we can split the Coinbase transaction and we can say 50% goes to the miner, but also, you know, 50% goes to this other random person. Well, that's not right. So we need to check exactly where this second output is actually leading to. And that is what this script pub key um, variable is. That's why this is really important. So that's why we need this C script thing here because we need to be checking against the script pub key all right so is it the same if it's not the same as the developer c script all right then we know for sure that the the fund output is invalid all right bad transaction vector of outputs fund output is invalid all right so that's um that's the rule for that okay and now there's one more check that we need to do to make sure that everything's valid and that is checking that the second output the the, the, the fund output is 25 percent at least of the um, first output, the mining reward. So, so why at least twenty five percent? Well, as a charity coin, okay, as a fund with a fund, we're okay if a we're 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 perfectly happy for a miner to mine a block and give us eighty percent of the reward or hundred percent of the reward. Okay, if they want to give us more than they have to, then they're allowed to do that. Okay, but they're not allowed to give us less. Than we, than we want, all right? So it needs to be at least 25%, okay? And you can implement it and say that it has to be exactly 25% or exactly whatever percentage you want, but if you're working with some kind of charity coin or something like that, you want to accept charitable blocks um, in their entirety because it makes sense. If you want to give the people the option to um, mine for you completely. So that's the reason for that, okay? Um, so we've got, if, if the um, transaction vector, okay, if, if the, um, the, uh, the, the fund value, okay, the, the number, we've got the zeroth, the zeroth um, vector, sorry, the zeroth output, I should say, and that's the miner's output, and then we've got the first output, which is the fund, all right? So if the fund's value is less than the miner's, okay, the zeroth one, which is the miner value, divided by four, and I'll explain what this means in a minute, this 1e minus 5. But if it's if, if it's less than that divided by 4, then it's th then they haven't given us enough. All right? They haven't given the fund enough. Okay? So now let me explain exactly what this 1e minus 5 means. In computer science and in um, programming, you have something called a floating point number. And um, it's a number with a decimal point. Okay? You have integers, which are whole numbers. And then you have floating point numbers, which are not integers. They're integers with a decimal point on the end, right? So like 0 0.64. That's a floating point. Um, now, if you take a number like 10 and you divide it by 3, right? You get 3.3333 forever. The threes go on forever, okay? But as you can probably imagine, computers can't deal with that very easily. They can't deal with infinite, infinitesimal values. They can't deal with values that go on forever after the decimal point. So they have something called precision, okay? The level of precision that they allow, okay? Different languages have different levels of precision, but for all intents and purposes, um, they, none of them um, have infinite precision. So when we do this division, this division here, we want to make sure that if we divide the thing by four, it's actually still going to be 25%. It might be like 24.99999%, right? So what we would need to do is we need to add a tiny little incremental value onto four. Not Well, it's not really an incremental value. It's a tiny little portion of a fraction, right? It's it's 0 0.000001, right? So we want to add that onto our four just so that we can get it over the line on the 25%. That's a floating point precision uh, technique, all right? So that's why we have that little part there. So that is everything that you need to know about the validation rules, validation.cbp. That's the only um, stuff that we're gonna be changing in there for everybody on the rest of the network to be able to look at the blocks that you're mining and go, yep, they conform to our new protocol. Um, they're not um, just BS blocks that you're that you're making to try to steal coins. Um, they're, they're legitimate, we allow those blocks on the network. So that's the validation.cpp. Now, the third and final file that you're going to have to change is a very specific file, all right? Well, it's a very specific function, all right? We have something called mining.cpp, and that is in the RPC folder, source RPC mining.cpp, all right? And the way that mining.cpp creates blocks is different to the way that miner.cpp creates blocks, all right? We have this really massive function here, and I'm trying to find the top of it. Um, get block template. That's what miner, sorry, mining.cpp uses, all right? So that's going to be a little bit different. And I've completely lost my place now. So let's go back. All right, here we go. Um, so we're going to need to change one little tiny thing in this 
code, or you're going to get a really terrible error that I've experienced that took me a long time to solve, all right? So it's really important that you change this as well, all right? This is going to allow pool mining um, to work correctly. If you don't make this change, the wallet mining will work, but the pool mining won't. So make sure you change this as well. Um, we have something called, we have some pairs in here, and we have something called the coin uh, base value, and that's paired up with something else, all right? And in the original code, it only looks at the vector of transactions in the Coinbase, and then it looks at the first, the zeroth, the first element in there, which would be the mining reward. Because in, in the Bitcoin source code, we only have one output in the Coinbase transaction, okay? So it's perfectly safe for them to only look at the first output, right? If um, th th there isn't any other outputs that could screw it up, right? So instead of just looking at the um, the, f the first output in, in the... Um, in the vector of, transa uh, of transactions, right? Um, we need to look at the entire value. Get value out is like the entire value. We, we need to look at both the zeroth and all the rest of them as well, which is just one more, okay? So we need to change that from n value, which would have been just looking at the zeroth position, um, and we need to change it to get value out, which looks at the whole um, the whole uh, vector, okay? So that's the final thing that you need to change to implement a splitting of the Coinbase reward in your cryptocurrency. Now, if you have any questions about how any of that works, and if I wasn't clear on anything in particular, um, don't be afraid to ask any questions in the comment section. I'm super active in the comment section, so I'll make sure I answer everything I can. And subscribe if you want to learn um, anything else about cryptocurrencies in general, but, uh, but particularly forking your own cryptocurrencies out of Bitcoin. Um, and I'll make sure I answer any of your questions and any of your your um, suggestions on the next videos. And as always, please remember to hodl for as long as possible.